Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. thank you for joining me. This is episode number 49 of Let's Play as the Jews. So right now, we're uh, going through speed 5 phase, where we just try to get out of our truce timers. I could assassinate him. Um, our heir right now is our uncle. I kind of maybe want to reevaluate that, actually, since we've had quite a few people come of age. I mean, we could even choose, like, a strong female character as our heir. Which isn't bad, really. I mean, she has some sons. I have a, she has a quick son. I mean, that would be a good path of the dynasty to go down. I like to sort in this case by dynasty when we're under elective, and then just look at all the ones that have the little blood drop. Any one of these can be played. So, like, she, you know, strong is just such a great trait. The problem is she's a woman. So that's not good. We have a 15-year-old aunt who's ill, has great traits. Chase isn't the best, but... A quick son, the chosen one. He, he survived his illness, thank goodness. I think I'd actually, out of all these people, even though he's young, I might prefer my son over my uncle. No, that's not true. The uncle would be, he would be far better in succession. We'll just keep him for now. Speak of the devil. And I'm going to educate him, hopefully, until he's 15 and then change it over. Because I do want him to pick up level 4 education. I don't want level 3 like what I have, but I'll give him better traits most likely than the AI does. For those who aren't aware, the AI, the way that it works with education is that, you know, the same events pop up as what I see. Like it'll say, wow, they're getting lots of reinforcements. It'll pop up and it'll say, like, do I choose to make him one of these four decisions? And the AI is weighted. It's like a it's like a dice. A die gets rolled. Another great eminence. Matrilineal, of course, why not? Look at that guy. And depending on the traits, the, the different options may have more or fewer. Um, what just happened to the Abbasid dynasty? He's not at war, and yet these guys are somehow independent. Did he just, like, accept an independence war? This guy must be the former caliph. Somehow he became independent. Uh, it looks like a faction fired. Oh, nope. Did the caliph change? No, I'm just going crazy. Let's try to kill this guy. No? Okay, I guess we kill it. just keep the kill plot on the Caliph going. But anyway, depending on their, their own traits, they might be weighted towards certain ones of the decisions. But that's not a guarantee. I mean, it's still a random roll, so they could very easily pick up the wrong trait. And now we have no matrilineally available people. This is where we can do little jinxy type things, like invite nobles to court. They're really expensive, but if we spend a little bit of piety, these random men come to court, and then I can go back to that woman. And since they're in my court, I can force them to do what I want. So I can force them to marry her matrilineally, which allows us to increase the size of our dynasty, which works really, really well with elective succession. Apparently we've just inherited the Duchy of Damascus. So that poor man just died. Um, and we inherited all these counties, so let's search for men. We're not in prison. Who are any marriage? Not currently rulers. Yes. Yes. And who would we like? A good marshal man again? I think so. He's 68, though. Let's go with a 21-year-old bastard. I just like saying that. <laughs> We're going to choose the bastard. <laughs> I don't know why that's so fun. And we'll go ahead and we'll even give him a woman. You can have this 69-year-old. Oh, you don't like her? Fine, have the 27-year-old. I have a cousin who became a misguided warrior. What a failure. Uh, we'll just find a woman, some girl for him. I do want to keep them married. Again, I'm, I'm basically in the phase of the game now where, um, especially as a Jew, not having the ability to get marriages for like alliances and territory, it just makes sense. We just play the eugenics game. My liege, rumors have reached us of a mighty new leader on the rise from the Orgos Turkish tribes of Turkestan. The Khan, by the name of Seljuk, has served in the armies of the Steppe Hordes and is apparently a brilliant commander 
and an inspiring leader of men. He appears to set, set to carve out his own realm in the regions of Turkestan and Kiva. Awesome. Sounds like we're about to deal with a horde. Time for Passover. Sounds good. And of course, there's a whole bunch of people who don't want to come. Past the Matzo again. So this guy, uh, we have a truce timer with him. It's just weird stuff going on here. This is a different Caliph. It must, I mean it is, because we have no truce timer now. How many troops can you raise, Mr. Caliph, man? 7,000. You have more than that. We have twice that in retinue right here. We want Ulter Jordan, please. My aunt became a amateurish plotter. What a failure. Here, take this uh, ambitious man. Normally, I wouldn't... I mean, it's, it's, gen it's just kind of weird doing all these matrilineal marriages with the women. But, you know, it is what it is. I love the split interface button. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, the AI would, like, say, well, I'm cruel, so let's give this a 40% weight. This one, you know, 30%, and this one 30%. And then it just rolls a die, and then that's what it picks. Whereas the player can always choose the one that they like the best, which makes the kids kind. Now the cousin. The family's going to get so big if I keep doing this. Like, it'll just get insanely large. A dangerous revolt. Over here. We did go up to medium, right? My aunt's husband just died already. My uncle just died as well. My heir. I actually kind of like her traits. If it wasn't for the chaste. Although she already has a strong son. And I guess it doesn't really matter because we've got plenty of dynasty members to choose from. Let's go with, um, well, let's just see what they do. Let's see if they'd be willing to vote for her. They being the electors. And what's interesting, actually, come to think of it, there aren't very many electors. There are only three. Because our kingdom is the Khanate of Judea. And when you look at the du jour map mode, Judea is only these three duchies. Well, actually, it's just two duchies. Alania and Azov. And then we get a vote. So, that's why this guy... Oh, that's who's being voted for. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Duchess of Alania. So, this duchess is voting for him. And then the supporters here, it would be Duke Bolkan II. This guy is supporting our vote. And this, this girl, for whatever reason, she's six. And she's like, you know what? I like this man. He took he no, that's gross, don't say that. I have to I have to filter myself occasionally. Um, but anyway, she's voting for that random guy. And hey, he's dancing. So because it's only those two those two things, there's no uh, no other electors. So we can we can vote for whoever the heck we want. Of course, Dijour Drift is happening in like the next number of years we're gonna see two more years we'll see this this whole thing go in. Our kingdom is going to grow pretty quickly. I'm still pretty pleased with this playthrough as far as how well we've managed to create an empire out of nothing when you start off as a Jew surrounded by all enemies. I mean, it's certainly a lot more difficult than the Hungry start, for example. Look at that, we're winning a battle without commanders without even paying attention. That's funny. You're that bad. That's right. We even captured a duke there. I still don't understand. Um, I forgot my train of thought. Okay, it's the Seljuk the Cruel's invasion of Kiva on me. 
The great Seljuk, my liege, the great Khan of Seljuk and his vast horde of Turkish horsemen have raised banners. And they have 50,000 troops. The Turkish gods are strong. Now we can only raise not that many. And he's caught me with my pants down because I am currently in the middle of the war. Over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise... Uh, well, we're going to wait a couple days just to make sure that we have full levy. Because Vassal Opinion may have raised once they declared war on us. And we're going to rally everything away from this bad guy. But, the thing is, I can't keep them rallied. Like, I can't do that for long. We're going to have to go engage him because he's going to start assaulting right away. And, um, if we don't do it quickly, then he is going to assault his way to 100% very fast. So I'd really like to end this war as quickly as possible. Hmm. So he has spread out. These troops are composed of lots of horse archers, which is scary as hell. Captured some other guy that doesn't matter. Unfortunately, oh, nope, we did manage to reinforce, good. Up to 57, 59% now. December 9th, good, we're going to escape. These guys are going in the wrong direction, though. We've got a 12 stack together now. It's possible we could rally it down and actually engage, but he will recombine. And he's surprisingly not assaulting. Normally the AI loves to assault, like, right away. At least, generally speaking. But he is getting those sieged down pretty quickly. It's too bad we can't take up that duchy while we're sitting here. And the Abbasid has uh, managed to somehow now raise a much sub substantially larger army. There's 20,000 men there. Let's hope that he does not come at me. You know, she's still got breeding. Breedability. Just marry that girl. Alright, I'm just going to assault this so that we can end this war before we have to fight that army. I don't want to deal with him. But there we go. There's one duchy down of the, th of the four that we need. Can we create it? We'd have to usurp it. Alright, well... I guess we'll just give away the individual counties. I definitely am looking forward to landing these organizers. Because we can use them in the upcoming battles. Okay, speaking of organizers, let's go ahead and um, put one of those organizers in charge here. And let's put an organizer in charge of this one too. Just so we can kind of get on the right spot to deal with the Seljuks here. It's funny how, wasn't I mentioning it like this video, how the hordes aren't a problem? The Mongols are the ones that are in 1300, and they're the ones that are scary. The Seljuks are not that big of a deal. Looks like we just lost our marshal, so you, sir, get the job. Okay, unfortunately, here comes a lot, and that guy probably has some money, not much, but... 20... what is this? 30... 28,000. We should be fine, but he's gonna get a lot of war score if we let him sit and actually 
take the, the castles and cities and everything beneath it. 47%. Yeah, we've got to get down there, like, right now. Which is why I'm glad we got the organizer. Okay, so now he is coming at me with both armies here. Um, we're going to be there on August 21st, though. So we're going to have a, a larger force than he has. And this is our capital, so we have a fantastic supply limit. Let's make sure we don't want the organizers anymore. We just want them while we're traveling. Ooh, the Holy Warrior. He would be awesome. And the Mountain Expert. No, we're fighting in step. Let's take the Flanker in case his flank wins. And let's send the Organizer. He's already leading that one. Okay. Let's put an Organizer in charge of this. Try to get these troops to catch up. Just check and see if we have a third Organizer. Oh, we do. Me. That's actually a good way to make sure I'm not in this battle, too. He's still coming at me, which is kind of surprising, I guess. I mean, not really. I guess he's got 20... 25,000 of his own. Nope. Backed off, didn't he? Okay. Um, can we afford to wait? I think not. Going in here. Okay, we are going to grab that organizer again. So that we can catch him. This is going to cause him to reinforce... He can't catch us. But he is coming right through our path of reinforcement. So let's just do that. We can kept catch part of the army here. This might make a difference. Alright, slow the game down. So he is bringing this, this force through. This army is on its way. This army is, is surprisingly continuing to go to New Jerusalem, which... He's not going to even be able to catch this 12,000 that's reinforcing here. So we're going to end up with 40,000 troops against 9 and 9. He only has two flanks. He's, he's going to get absolutely slaughtered here. As soon as we enter... Oh yeah, and he's, he's the fighting the religious enemy guy. As soon as the center flank falls, he's going to get a 200 and insane some bonus. Look at this bonus. It says 270, but it's... Well, it says 182, but it's going to update. 422%. Yeah, he's decided against reinforcement. <laughs> I'm a little concerned about these two armies actually getting caught by this one, so let's not advance them any further. And let's go chase down this one now. Keep the organizer, actually, because the organizer is what's letting us catch the armies. That large army, November 10th. Nope, can't actually catch it, so let's go get this one. Over there. We're a tiny bit down on morale, so maybe. Um, okay, I want the primary organizer in the center. I want the religious guy on that side, and I want the flanker on this side. November 9th. We'll be there November 11th. Okay, in that case, we stay here for one day. Salt this back. Try again. And he's not actually trying to run. Now the fact that we're suffering attrition isn't good, but... Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to take a break here, and in the next video we'll pu push back the Seljuks, and, uh, and then we'll continue on our little, little conquest of uh, Jerusalem there. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you again soon.